Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening no matter where you are. The news from Thailand and Southeast Asia. What have we got today? Foreigners in Thailand worried about their security. Bangkok announces ban on alcohol sales, horrible news. Over to the Philippines. The Philippines back Vietnam after China sinks a fishing boat. Mask wearing in Pattaya, Thailand now compulsory. How to spread Wahin coronavirus. A prank by two 17 year olds in Singapore. Chinese men arrested in Bangkok with 45,000 fake Chinese coronavirus test kits. Thailand company CP brings in a machine to start medical mask production. Fantastic news. Thailand approves cash for Chinese coronavirus outbreak. Japan set to announce record economic stimulus package. But first up, what can you do with a cigarette lighter and a face mask? You will be quite surprised. From China. This is what I got. And this one is the one I bought from Houston. So how to test if the mask works or not. So you put mask on, and then you light a lighter, and then you blow it. <laughs> so this one I got from Houston, the fire will not go off. Now watch the one I got from China. Well, there you go. Made in China. Now you might understand why deliveries from China are being sent back worldwide. A grim prospect for foreigners living in Thailand. Say, have you ever had the feeling you're not really wanted? Well, a lot of foreigners in Thailand are starting to feel that way as the highly infectious Chinese corona outbreak spreads throughout Bangkok streets. Reports from the expatriate community have multiple reasons to be nervous. The work situation, the global economical downturn, will inevitably put most businesses, including Thais and non-Thai payrolls, under lots and lots of strain. There are currently around 2.2 million foreigners working legally in Thailand. Suggestions that the numbers could be as high as 4.5 million if one includes the informal sector, in Bangkok alone there are 80 to 90,000 professional work permit holders and tens of thousands more around the country. This number does not even take into account those who bypass the official work permit system, such as so-called digital nomads or other professionals who come to Thailand temporarily to do business on a non-standard visa, usually via the internet. Thai government help. With nearly every sector that employs expats severely affected by the coronavirus, the Thai government should not be strictly enforcing work permit renewals and overstay rules. The most obvious concern is the congregation of foreigners at various immigration bureaus and overcrowding at reporting centres, which threaten not only foreign workers with the possibility of spreading the Chinese coronavirus, but also Thai workers at these premises. Foreign workers also need support, just like their Thai counterparts, to properly manage their businesses and give them a fair chance to recover once the outbreak subsides. It should be reminded that informal but skilled workers like digital nomads, artists and artisans contribute not only to Thailand's economy through rent, retail and other purchases, but they also contribute to Thailand society through the exchange of information they too should benefit from relaxed regulations. Will this madness ever end? We are in the middle of a global pandemic and the Immigration Bureau are still insisting for stranded tourists and expats to jump through hoops to extend their stay. The Thai government announced it would approve automatic extensions for tourists until June in order to lower the high risk for both immigration staff and foreigners. But more worrying is local anger brewing amongst Thais, some of who remain convinced, partly fueled by the comments from the Thai health minister, that the Chinese coronavirus outbreak probably is a farang import, a term used for white westerners. 
and that the dirty farangs are the reason that Thai people are currently holed up at home and are losing their jobs. And this now has spread to Facebook, with one Facebook account encouraging Thai nationals and throw rocks at the farangs. Many embassies complained to the Thai government about this Facebook page, but the Thai government did nothing about it, with hundreds of supporting comments from disgruntled locals saying they were ready to take up arms and take on a dirty foreign tourist. This is all over the Thai health minister's comments about Farangs wearing masks. There are also plenty of cases where expat and visitors to Thailand were denied the sale of face masks, being told the masks were only for Thai nationals. Also, foreigners are now having to confront more checkpoints and inspections. It is strongly recommended that you carry your passport with you at all times. Will tourists going home with horror stories about their treatment in Thailand benefit Thailand? It's difficult times for everyone right now. The Chinese coronavirus outbreak knows no nationality or national border. We're all in this together. Let us hope that the Thai government are listening so that the foreign expats and tourists will return to Thailand someday. Bangkok, Thailand. Authorities in Bangkok have banned alcohol sales for 10 days to help prevent social gathering that could spread the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. Following the announcement, people queued to buy wine, beer and spirits in the capital. The ban will be in effect from April the 10th to April the 20th and is the metropolitan region's latest effort to contain and surge in infection since early March. Bangkok Metropolitan Administration said in a briefing, we're about to gain control over the spread of the virus. It's also believed, according to many comments on Thai social media, that this follows similar moves in Chiang Mai to stop people from gathering and drinking during the traditional Thai New Year, or Songkran, which falls during the same period. The administration postponed Songkran due April the 13th to the April the 15th, until later in the year, but some people may still seek to celebrate. <laughs> Sad times in Bangkok. The Philippines backs Vietnam after China sinks a fishing boat. Vietnam and China have frequently collided diplomatically over the disputed islands in the South China Sea. The Philippines has expressed a solidarity with Vietnam after Hanoi protested against what it said was a ramming and sinking of a Vietnamese fishing boat by a Chinese Coast Guard vessel in the disputed South China Sea. The incident happened at a time when common approach was crucial in confronting the Chinese coronavirus pandemic, it said. The Chinese coronavirus outbreak is a very real threat that demands unity and mutual trust. Neither fish or fiction, historical claims are worth the fuse that lights by such incidents, the unusual strong-lettered statement from the Philippines said. China claims virtually the entire South China Sea has built several islands equipped with military installations in the area. One of the world's busiest shipping lanes, Vietnam has been a constant and vocal opponent of Beijing's increasingly muscular territorial ambitions. The Filipino Department of Foreign Affairs recalls that 22 Filipino fishermen were left floating in the high seas after a Chinese vessel sunk their boat at Reed Bank on June the 9th last year. They were rescued by a Vietnamese fishing boat. Our own similar experience revealed how much trust in friendship is lost by it and how much trust was created by Vietnam's humanitarian act of directly saving the lives of our Filipino fishermen, the department said. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte, however, played down the incident with the Philippines' exclusive economical zone, even as it sparked anger in the streets of the Philippines. The owner of the Chinese vessel later apologised for the incident and promised to compensate the Filipino fishermen for the damage to their fishing boat. The United States has also expressed serious concern over the reported sinking of the Vietnamese vessel and called on China to remain focused on supporting efforts to combat the Chinese coronavirus pandemic and stop exploiting the destruction or vulnerability of other states to expand its unlawful claim in the South China Sea. Amid the Chinese coronavirus pandemic, China has announced new research stations on the military bases it built in Ferry Reef and Subi Reef. 
and landed special military aircraft on Fiery Cross Reef. U.S. spokeswoman Morgan Ortegas said in a statement, referring to two of several islands China built in disputed shoals in the South China Sea. China has also continued to deploy maritime militia around the Spratly Islands, she said, referring to the hotly contested group of islands and citing a 2016 decision by an international tribunal that invalidated China's sprawling claims in the South China Sea. China has said it has the right to build in waters where it is exercising sovereignty and has ignored it and continued to defy the arbitration ruling. All eight Vietnamese sailors were rescued by the Chinese and admitted to wrongdoing, Chinese maritime police spokesman was quoted as saying. China seized the islands from the Vietnamese in 1974 and frequent confrontations have occurred there since. Wearing a face mask in Pattaya will be mandatory. Heavy fines, jail time possible for those who don't wear them. This goes for Thai nationals and tourists and foreign residents. Pattaya city has been closed to the rest of Thailand to help prevent the spread of the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. Mask wearing will become compulsory in all areas of Pattaya city that are public. Under the emergency degree law, Currently in place for Thailand, one could see a fine of up to 100,000 Thai baht, even up to a year in jail for not wearing a mask in public. And yes, it includes all foreigners, residents, tourists to wear masks when inside the city. For all those who are complaining about wearing masks or not wearing them, you are in Thailand, not in your own country. Mask wearing is not about you, the wearer, but the people around you. Just do what is required of you, and you'll have no problem. If not, or if you disagree, you might want to look at going back to your own country. Over to Singapore now. Two 17-year-old boys have been arrested for posting a video that shows one of them drinking two bottles of juice at an NTUC Fair Prize supermarket in Singapore and then placing the bottles back on the shelf. They will be charged in court with offence of public nuisance with common intent. The video was uploaded by one of the boys to his private Instagram account and was later circulated by his friend online with the caption, How to Spread Wuhin, commonly known as the Chinese Coronavirus. Police said that the video caused public alarm during the period of heightened sensitivity of the Chinese Coronavirus outbreak. In the video, a boy is seen drinking from a bottle in the store before putting it back on the shelves. He takes a drink from another bottle, despite the NTUC staff member walking by, and puts it back because it's too sour. A version of the video circulated online with the title How to Spread Wu Hin, referring to the Chinese city that was then the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. The two boys later said that the video was a joke and that they had paid for the drinks. They have also apologised. In the apology they stated we are indeed really childish and immature, but I really hope you guys can give us a second chance, they said on social media. But that was not enough to appease the public who slammed them for their insensible act, calling for severe punishments. Others expressed worry that the video would lead to others to mimic the irresponsible stunt. I think those two children want to go on a long holiday somewhere, teach other children not to do that sort of thing. Maybe they should think about the people that have died from the Chinese coronavirus before they pull these little pranks. Two Chinese men identified as Chin Li and Wan Pimpin have been arrested inside a home in Prakanong District, Bangkok, after officials received a tip-off that fake Chinese coronavirus test kits were being smuggled into the country. 45,000 fake Chinese coronavirus test kits, 350,000 medical masks, 1,200 infrared thermometers were seized, valued at around 33 million Thai baht. These fake medical equipment items were being sold at extraordinarily high prices in the Bangkok area and surrounding districts. 
The Food and Drug Administration will be investigating to find out where the fake Chinese coronavirus test kits were made and who else is involved in importing them into the country. Police officers from the Consumer Protection Police Division and officials from the Food and Drug Administration have reported that the large pile of evidence is piling up as the crisis unfolds, including 45,000 fake China coronavirus test kits, 350,000 medical masks, 1,200 infrared thermometers, 53,000 litres of alcohol, 7,896 bottles of fake hand sanitizer, all valued at around 50 million Thai baht. The punishment for smuggling medical equipment is imprisonment for up to one year and a fine not exceeding 100,000 Thai baht, or both. All products claiming to be Chinese coronavirus test kits online at the moment are all fake, according to the FDA. What it boils down to is selling fake hope and giving people confidence that they don't have the coronavirus when they had, which would help the spread of the Chinese coronavirus. I think the punishment for such crimes should be far worse than what it is now. Thailand. CP brings in a machine to start medical mass production. The Sharon Pokhan Group, commonly known as CP, in Thailand is a major company. CP is currently the largest producer of shrimp and sits at the top three in the world for pork and other products in the food industry. You might know CP from their relationship with 7-Eleven convenience stores. About four weeks ago, the company announced its plans to build a factory specifically to start the production of medical masks for medical and personal and the Thai people. That's great news. The first machine to make medical masks arrived on the night of 5th of April 2020 from China. In the past three weeks, the medical mask factory is now 80% complete. The machine will start its operation at the factory after it arrives in Sawinapurm Airport. CP has brought in an automatic medical mask machine with the ability to produce an average of 50,000 medical masks per day. The second machine is expected to arrive on the 9th. There are strict regulations on flights arriving in Thailand due to the Chinese coronavirus situation. Flights in and out of Thailand during this time can be moved or cancelled at unexpected moments. CP will be able to produce an average of 100,000 medical masks per day or about 3 million masks per month. After the second machine arrives at the factory, the factory has a clean room environment inside and only 20% of the operation is left before the factory is ready to go in full production. The first machine is delivered to the factory and the team in Thailand will be communicating with specialists abroad by teleconferencing to properly set up and run the machine. After the factory is complete, medical personnel in Thailand will have a better medical mask supply. Thailand will be able to make its own masks without having to import them from other countries. I do wish other countries would follow Thailand's example. Good on the CP group, putting Thailand first. The Thai Cabinet approved a package of economical measures worth 1.9 trillion baht, which is around 58 million US dollars, give or take a dollar, to alleviate the impact of the Chinese coronavirus outbreak, Thai Ministry of Finance has stated. The package for the Southeast Asia's second largest economy included a law to borrow 1 trillion Thai baht plus central bank measures worth another 9 billion baht in soft loans and support for corporate bonds they said at a news conference. Of the 1 trillion baht borrowed, 600 billion baht will be for public health works and relief measures, and the rest for rebuilding the economy and jobs creation. He said the government expected to start borrowing in early May, mainly for domestic sources, he said. The latest steps followed billions of dollars of stimulus measures recently introduced to cope with the Chinese coronavirus outbreak on the economy which is heading into a recession. The slump in tourism, exports and confidence increased pressure on Prime Minister Priyat Chinichat's government to scale up spending. The Chinese coronavirus outbreak is now our national agenda, Mr Priyat said in a briefing. I will be stringent about how we spend and the spending is done most effectively, he said. The initiative is worth about 9% 
of the GDP, the administration said. It added that heavily oversubscribed cash handout programs of 5,000 baht a month is being extended by three months. The 5,000 is for people who are out of work. That is to last them one month. Due to the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. Over to Japan now. Japan set to announce record economical stimulus package. Japan government is planning to finalize a significant stimulation package worth 108 trillion yen, equal to 20% of the Japanese economic outputs, to cushion the heavy effects of the Chinese coronavirus pandemic on the world's third largest economy. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is also set to announce a state of emergency for the capital Tokyo and six other provinces to stem a worrying rise in Chinese coronavirus infections in key population centres. Japan and countries overseas are facing their biggest crisis in recent years because of the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. Some Japan areas will go into lockdown. This will allow us to strengthen current steps to prevent an increase in infections while ensuring the economy actively is sustained as much as possible. Prime Minister Abe said the emergency would last around a month and give governors the authority to call on people to stay at home and businesses to close, with no penalties for ignoring the request. In most cases, enforcement will rely more on peer pressure and respect for authority. We are currently in deliberation with the country's government to decide which type of facilities we will be asking to close or shorten business hours. Tokyo governor stated, while reiterating there would be no restrictions on buying groceries and medicine. Many analysts believe Japan has already slid into recession as supply chains have been disrupted. Travel ban and social distancing policies put more pressure on the slowing economy 